I want to start by asking, raise your hand if you've ever pooped your pants. Okay, a couple out there. Now wait, I'm not asking as a baby or a small child. I'm asking as a teenager, a preteen, or a full-grown adult. Raise your hand if you've ever pooped your pants. Okay, we got a couple. Right? Well, I have. <laughs> yeah. So, I was a senior in high school. And where I went to school, if the seniors didn't miss a certain amount of days, we didn't have to take finals. So it was the end of the year, and I woke up that day with a stomach ache. I don't know if it was a bad burrito from the night before or some sort of stomach flu. All I know is that my stomach hurt, but I couldn't miss any more days of school. And there was no way I was going to be taking those finals. So I went to school. It was the first period of the day. I'm sitting in choir, singing along, when all of a sudden, I feel it. You know that feeling, right? That like, ooh, hey, I gotta go feeling. But unfortunately, our rule was only two students could use the bathroom at a time. So I sat in the back of the room, watching the door like a hawk, waiting for that student to come back. The second that door opens, I'm out of my seat, pass in hand, out the door, the door slams shut, and I take off. Now, I'm not doing a full-on sprint, because at this point, I'm not sure I can physically hold it in if I'm running. So I'm walking, power walking, as fast as humanly possible, while I'm talking to myself, like, okay, Carly, you can do this. Like, I think I can. I think you're almost there. Like, come on, come on. But that hallway just seems to be getting longer and longer, and that feeling is getting stronger and stronger, and, and I'm walking faster and faster, and then it happened. <laughs> I didn't make it. I was probably two feet away from the bathroom door. I'm a senior in high school, get this, on the ballot for prom queen, which I won two weeks later. And I just crapped my pants in the hallway. <laughs> I was horrified. I was devastated. There's no one around who saw this happen or smelt it, but that didn't matter. I was humiliated. Now I want to ask you, as teens or preteens or full-grown adults, why do we poop our pants? Do we want to poop our pants? No. no, right? It's not a choice. We can't help it. It's out of our control. I mean, we try to help it, we try to control it, but sometimes it is just not enough. So why are we so embarrassed? Why is it so wrong? Why is it something that no one talks about? Just like being a victim of power-based personal violence. I'm a speaker, an educator, and a storyteller on power-based violence. This violence where a perpetrator uses aggression, assertion, they use power and control over their victim through manipulation and forces, where they take away that power and control away from their victim. I myself am a victim and survivor of bullying and sexual harassment, dating violence, and sexual assault. I share my stories all over the country with hundreds and thousands of people, and it's usually the same. After a presentation, someone will come up to me and they'll ask me things like, how are you so brave? Or, do you ever get ashamed? Or my personal favorite is, how do you live your life like this? How do you make a career out of this, sharing these embarrassing stories? <laughs> well, easy. Because it wasn't my fault. <laughs> Why should I be embarrassed? Why should I be ashamed? Why should I hide it? Power-based violence is something that happens to millions of people, and I'm not any different. So why are we so scared to speak out? Maybe, maybe it's because we're told we could have prevented it, right? that it's our fault, that we should or could have done something differently, and, and it's our fault that we didn't stop it. Just like when I pooped my pants in high school. Okay, 
I probably shouldn't have gone to school that day, right? But I mean, I had to. And as I was getting ready, do you think that I was thinking, hmm, I better not go to school because I might poop myself today? No. And even if I did, even if that crossed my mind for like a split second, I guess I could have wore a diaper to school, right? Or when I first got that, like, that feeling, I could have just walked up, walked out of the class. And if my teacher yelled at me, I guess I could have made up a lie or been like, yo, Miss P, I'm going to poop myself. Like, I can't hold it. <laughs> I could have done those things, but I didn't. Because looking back, don't they seem a little bit ridiculous? I didn't prevent it because I wasn't expecting it until it happened. Just like when I didn't fight back. When I laid there and took it, or so I've been told. Or how I let my friends sexually harass me because I didn't stand up for myself enough. Or how I didn't leave my abusive relationship sooner. It's my fault, right? Now, when I pooped my pants, okay, in high school, I'm sitting in that stall trying to figure out what to do, okay? I came up with the most brilliant plan. I knew it would only be a matter of time before another choir student walks into that bathroom. So I waited patiently, peeking through that small crack of the bathroom stall until Kate Robb walks in. Um, hey, Kate. Would you mind grabbing me my coat? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, of course. Now. I'm thinking that she's thinking that I must have started my period and I needed a tampon, right? Like she wouldn't be thinking I just crapped myself in the hallway, <laughs> okay? So I wait patiently, okay, waiting. Kate comes back, she drapes my coat over the bathroom stall. I thank her, she leaves, and I proceed with my brilliant plan. I put on my coat, I walk out of the stall, I throw away my underwear, I throw away my pants and cover the evidence with mounds and mounds of paper towel in the evidence, or sorry, in the trash, because yeah, it was that bad. So the bell's gonna ring any second. So what do I do? The bell rings and I walk across the school. No underwear, no pants, just a knee length pea coat between me and the entire world. Well, high school. I made it to my gym locker, I put on my sweatpants, and I continued the rest of the day at school. What blows my mind is that instead of directly asking Kate for help, who at the time I considered a really good friend, instead of asking her to go get my pants, or asking her you know, for advice, like what do I do? This just happened. I was so embarrassed that I would rather walk across the school half naked than ask her for help. Just like when I asked my dad to start taking me to school. Do you think I told him that it was because I was being bullied on the bus for having small boobs? No, because I was embarrassed. Or do you think that I told my friends and family that I was scared to go back to my dorm room? because I knew my boyfriend would be there waiting for me, angry at me for something I had done that day, or just checking in. No, because I was ashamed. And for years, for years, I was completely fine with saying he took advantage of me, that he got me drunk and he used me for sex. But I was repulsed the first time someone called it rape. No. no, 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 I would fight back if it was rape. I would report it to the police if it was rape. No, I'm not that kind of girl who would get raped because I'm not a victim. Now, if someone asked me, have you ever been made fun of by your friends to the point where you don't want to go to school anymore? Or has your partner ever used that line, if you love me? 
Or has someone ever touched your body without your permission? Am I more likely to say yes than answer that question, are you a victim? Of course, because we don't want to be known and labeled as victims. When I go to an event or I meet someone for the first time, does being a victim define me as a person? Because let me ask you, if you came here today, you read my biography, and it said Carly Johnson is a speaker, educator, storyteller, blah, 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 and she pooped her pants in high school, how would you react? That sounds a little bit ridiculous, right? Now, unfortunately for a lot of kids in middle school or high school, they do poop their pants in school. They are defined by that. But does it make me me? Does it make me who I am? No. What makes me me, what makes me Carly Johnson, is that I love to dance. I am the master at Halloween costumes. I once lip-synced Ice Ice Baby as my talent for a pageant. I'm fun and outgoing. I love children, and I have the biggest passion for equal education. And my dad, he doesn't call me goofy for nothing. What makes me me is me. I am not defined by what happens to me. Being a victim or pooping your pants or something that is out of your control does not define you. You define it. And when you do, there is nothing wrong with speaking up and asking for help. People ask me all the time, how do we move forward to a world without power-based violence? Well, you know how we're going to start? By talking about it. By acknowledging that it happens. Not by sweeping it under the rug and shaming victims, but by believing victims. All victims. I'm a white, cisgendered, middle-class, able-bodied heterosexual. Do you think that makes it easier for me to share my stories? Yeah, absolutely. Power-based violence is an intersectional issue, and we cannot ignore the struggles and the consequences that many have when speaking out. So if you have a story and you're not ready to share your story, or you never want to share your story, that's fine. It's your story. No one should ever be forced to share their story. But if you have a story and you want to share it, you should be able to live in a world where we don't blame and shame victims for coming forward, where they can speak out to get the support and justice that you deserve. Now maybe you're sitting here and you're thinking, okay, Carly, that's great, but you know what? I'm not a victim and I've never pooped my pants. Okay, well, you're one of the lucky few. Now if I asked you though, do you know someone who has? Would you maybe raise your hand? Or what if my first question today was something like a little less embarrassing? Like raise your hand if you've ever peed your pants. Well, what if I elaborate? How many of you have ever laughed so hard that just a little pee came out? <laughs> it happens. It happened to me like the other day, right? Okay. Or maybe you just gave birth and your body went through a lot of trauma so it can be hard to control. It happens. Or maybe, maybe you're like my fiance and his friends who in college would have a little too much to drink, pass out on the couch, and they didn't make it to the bathroom that night. <laughs> It happens. Things that are out of our control, they happen. Sexual assault, domestic violence, bullying, harassment, stalking, child abuse, it happens. And when it does, we shouldn't have to be scared to speak out. Victims shouldn't have to feel so alone. I have a tattoo on my wrist that reads forward together forward. I was a freshman at NIU when I broke off an abusive relationship. My cousin was in rehab. My grandparents had gotten a divorce. My close friend disclosed that he was raped because he was gay. 
And then on February 14th, a gunman walked into our largest lecture hall, opened fire and killed five students, including my friend Gail. That year, it was one thing after another. And that was just the start of my college experience. Power-based violence was taking over my life. I didn't know who to go to, who to talk to. I was sick, I got depressed, and I felt completely alone. Forward together, forward is a phrase in our fight song. But it perfectly describes how we get through trauma and tragedy together. We move forward through friends, family, partners, school personnel, counselors, teachers, organizations, national hotlines, domestic violence shelters, rape crisis centers. We are speaking out through movies like The Hunting Ground. We have artists like Lady Gaga, politicians like Joe Biden. We, we have trainings like Green Dot, books like We Believe You. There are even comics like Something Terrible. We are moving forward to a world without power-based violence through campaigns like It's On Us and No More. We are doing this together. But you guys, we need your help. Because when one person shares their story, when one more person reaches out for help, it gives bravery and courage for others to share theirs. When it's uncomfortable, awkward or taboo, we find comfort in others. And sometimes, sometimes it helps to diffuse that awkwardness with a little poop joke. So, I'm gonna ask that question again. Raise your hand if you've ever pooped your pants. Wet the bed, peed yourself, or you know someone who has. Come on, get those hands up, I know it. Look around the room, look at all of those hands, right? Okay, now, one more question. Raise your hand if you have ever been affected by power-based personal violence. Raise your hand if you or someone you know has been victim to sexual assault, domestic violence, bullying, harassment, child abuse, stalking, raise your hand if that power and control was taken away. Look around the room. Never forget, you are not alone. To share your story, <laughs> visit poopedourpants.org or use the hashtag poopedourpants. Thank you.